So the Green New Deal, can either or both of you both of you discuss that and how it relates to Medicare for all in terms of it being basically uh, cut off at the knees at the start? Oof. Yeah. Probably, maybe Ricky probably a better answer better than I can because I haven't even even looked at the um, this new um, I guess version of the Green New Deal. Um, and, what, I mean, and what the failties are, I'm pretty sure it's not good. Yeah, I haven't done a deep dive on the Green New Deal myself, but I from what I understand, it's not uh, it's not going to be enough at all. Uh, fossil fuel industries will still kind of remain in place and do a lot of what they already do. Uh, zero emissions by 2030 is out the window. Mm. I, I, it seems like they're, they're, the way they brand it is not what it actually is. Uh, mm. so, uh, I'm not by any means an expert on this area, but um, it's not going to be enough. If, if we are in the existential crisis that they say we're in, uh, this is just a way of like rebranding industries that are destroying the planet. Um, yeah. And they're going to, they're going to continue to destroy the planet because the profit incentive is there to do so. And right. that's how they operate. So right. I don't know. Like, we need like a green new deal that like enacts a bunch of new laws right. to prevent these companies from destroying the planet. And it's not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, some, something that has teeth and people behind it who have teeth who are willing to stand up for it no matter what. And there's nobody there in Congress who's willing to do that. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, this, and this is why I think that AOC was kind of groomed from day one is she, she kind of went into Congress with her half page Green New Deal, uh, which is kind of lame considering, you know, the Green Party had a robust Green New Deal idea long before that, right? right. And she goes in there with her half pager and it's like, oh my goodness, this Democrat, it, she believes in the Green New Deal, but it's like not the it's not the Green New Deal, you know. Yeah. And we've been like talking about this Green New Deal in the Democratic Party, which isn't the Green New Deal. It's like this new thing that's just like it's like the Blue New Deal. It's the Democrat New Deal, and it's it's corporate. It's is what it is, as far as you know, as far as I'm concerned. And right. yeah, I, I mean, it ties into healthcare, but like, I mean, we're all going to be dead, so it's not going. Like, is healthcare even going to matter at that Whoa. point? We're fighting for healthcare, but there's like planet's going to be gone so is, is medicare for all even going to be relevant if, if we're all dead in 20 years anyways it's like ugh. right and that's why i asked the question because i think the two are inextricably linked uh, right. as you said they're both existential crises and um paying attention to one while ignoring the other is it, it doesn't make any sense and right and i also think that that can be said about the U.S.'s military budget and why there supposedly isn't enough money to cover universal health care for uh, everybody in this country. So can either of you speak to that? Because I'm, I'm a pretty big foreign policy nerd and, you know, I do a lot of research into uh, military budgets and all these imperial adventures and the fact that we're spending it's it's over a trillion dollars if you actually take into consideration everything that's spent not just the weaponry not just deploying soldiers to other people's countries um you know it how can we have a an honest discussion about uh, Medicare for all or a Green New Deal. And, and I'm talking about people in government here. How can we have an, how can they have an honest discussion about any of that um, and never bring up the, the U.S.'s military budget and, and its forever wars? I think it's, you know, if you're supporting Medicare for all, you, that doesn't mean you have to be a geopolitical expert, but I think you have to acknowledge the, the very strong linkage there. And also, if we're going to um, include the Green New Deal a little bit in this discussion, it's incredibly destructive to to the planet, uh, the U.S.'s military-industrial complex. 
I 100% agree with you. 100%. I think I think with uh, Medicare for all, they're going to eventually give it to us if we fight hard enough for it. Because the only industry it really hurts is the health insurance industry. They will find a way for you know private hospitals to make their money. You know, uh, they will find a way to enrich big pharma. It's the health insurance industry that really takes the biggest hit. Um, if you really break it down. But when it comes to the Green New Deal, enacting a real Green New Deal with teeth, like you said, it really, it would, it would literally require several industries to completely change. And mm -hmm. it's not just the fossil fuel industry. That's one of them. Uh, it's, it's big food. It's the military industrial complex, which people don't realize how, how much the military industrial complex literally destroys this planet more than probably, I mean, more than any corporation. And, you know, the top 100 corporations uh, are doing like 70% of the destruction or, you know, wh whatever these statistics are, but like the military industrial complex, that's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. military specifically is doing, doing a lot of that, right? So no one wants to have that conversation. No one, no one in D.C. is going to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, uh, the military industrial complex, uh, pretty much in the intelligence community, they all kind of run D.C., you know, Congress doesn't have an ounce of power anymore, it feels like. Um, so I, it feels hopeless at times. It really does. Yeah, I agree with that. I think also that now that Biden is president, that that national security state, intelligence state status quo that they all enjoyed under Obama and Bush Jr. and Clinton it's coming back into the fold and they're excited about it. They're back to their status quo. And I think we're seeing that leach into uh, congressional politics. I mean, it's always been there, but now it's really, really evident. I think we're seeing it. In we're back to business, baby. Right, exactly. And it's, yeah, like you said, um, Ricky, it feels more often than not hopeless, but we have to try to do something. And right. I think uh, collective direct action, like what you're doing with the march is, is an important step, whether it's a first step, whether it's the 10th step, um, it's something that needs to be done. People need to come together face to face and talk about these huge problems because they are really existential problems that are so easy to just poo poo away because they're not in our faces yet but one day we're going to wake up and they will be and and then what so right i really feel that um go ahead rick i'm sorry no go ahead no i really feel that um this march is going to embolden other uh, marches other um endeavors not just healthcare, but the green new deal um, so many other different fights. Once you have your health, you technically have your wealth. I mean, look at other countries that do have universal health care in some form. They can go out and protest and march because they can, they can get these scrapes and bruises and go back and go to the hospital and be taken care of. And I think that once we get this, hopefully we can, um, you know, get these other um, social safety nets like getting a Green New Deal, like getting the Fight for 15, like so many other different things that, you know, we're protesting for now. Um, I think that more people um, get emboldened in this fight. I think we can push for other stuff. I think I think the Green New Deal. I'm happy you brought that up. I think that will be like another. Um, I think there are going to be other fights. There's going to be other protests. There'll be other marches, not just healthcare. We're going to definitely have that for sure. Yeah, I yeah. like that we're starting with uh, Medicare for all because I think it's achievable. I think it's actually something we can get. <laughs> so it's nice mm -hmm. to fight for something that you can get with the resources that you currently have. And if we can build from there, maybe, you know, maybe we get Medicare for all, let's say we do, and maybe we shift the focus to environmental issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have to take on all those, those lovely groups that take dark money, uh, as Robbie Yeager has so eloquently explained to all of us that all these kids that hold signs are, are being uh, uh, backed by Soros and who, and who knows what else, you know, it's, it's, all these, it, it, the Green New Deal and, and the environmental issue thing is such a, a, a weird rebranding practice for so many people who have destroyed the planet. 
-hmm. It's just so many people who have done awful things and they're pretending like they're going to be the ones to save the planet, the ones that destroyed mm -hmm. the planet. Uh, mm -hmm. But they're but they're putting like kids and you know your your Greta Thunbergs out there <laughs> being like the future is going to save us. Uh, Where did those, she go? <laughs> she's around. They'll they'll yeah. they'll when they need her, they will call her and parade <laughs> her around like a show pony. And she's like, this is not good enough, you know, and all is that. She, but like, she's currently transatlantic on her. Uh, million dollar plus catamaran or whatever the hell she got to yeah just you know living the high life and being yeah. created around by these ghouls it's it's kind of a joke uh so yeah, yeah it's that fight is a bigger fight than medicare for all even and first things first let's focus on health care so at least we'll have healthy healthier people in the fight <laughs> that's the that's the goal at least and then maybe we mm -hmm. can uh, uh we can think even bigger because green new deal is right is, yeah and I, I think it's important to um to take people like uh Greta Thunberg to task because exactly as we should people like AOC because they're they're posing as people who want to achieve these these things that we really need if, if we want human existence to continue but that's all they're doing is they're posing and the patina is so slick and so convincing to many people that, you know, we, you know, we, I, I'll say we, because I don't want to like speak down to other people or say that like I have any more information than anybody else, but, you know, it's become so easy for us to, to see that patina and be convinced by it, that these are who these people really are. And they're saying what they really mean, but none of their actions follow that up. And right. whether it's AOC, Greta Thunberg, uh, Bernie Sanders, um, it's, I think there's a, a line that connects all of them. And I don't know if there's, if there are deeper sociological issues that are involved with that or philosophical issues, you know, obviously now is not the time to go into that, but, um, I think it really is important to examine and criticize the public characters of these people that were fed um, because time is running out and nothing is getting done. And it, it's, uh, you know, the kicking the can down the road, the can is getting kicked farther and farther uh, with each kick. So um, it's certainly super important. I would say necessary uh, to carry out marches and, and organize the way uh, you both have been doing. And I don't want to keep you for too long, but uh, a little bit more about the march. Have you received any pushback from people you would call opposition or uh, lobbyists? I would, I, anybody, I would say anybody who doesn't want Medicare for all. I would say not like a, I mean, if you want to say any, I guess for lack of a better word, any like major organizations or any institutions like that. No, I mean, we, do, I'm pretty sure Ricky and I definitely get people online who thinks that, you know, this is, you know, you can't have a march in a pandemic, you know, this is, just, you know, we have, we already, again, I, I get people who say we already got people working on this already. Um, so no major pushback in that regard. Um, but, uh, I, I would say I do get like, um, people who tell me all the time that I think that we should give Biden, you know, more of a chance, you know, <laughs> which is so stupid, yeah. you know, I do get, I get that a lot. Well, we I know mean, Biden said he was going to veto Medicare for all if it came across his desk. So we have to literally demand that he change his mind. Uh, right. we haven't received any real pushback, uh, um, We've, we've had a lot of organizations that are tentative. A lot of them do use COVID as an excuse not to uh, really get active. That's why we're also coming up with some templates right now to get people active uh, in different ways, like car caravans. If they don't want to get out there, well, then you can do a car caravan mm -hmm. uh, or you can get on social and, and, and do this. So we're, we're coming up with different ideas. So people can't use that excuse. So we can catch mm -hmm. them in that lie if they use that mm -hmm. excuse, right? So that's mm -hmm. kind of the idea. It's kind of, mm -hmm. kind of like how Force the Vote caught some people in their lives. Right. We're going to do the same thing with this. So we're going to catch some people. 
Uh, a lot of these organizations, there's tons of single payer organizations across the country. If you really like do a search, you're like, this is enormous. This whole oh, it's, ridic it's ridiculous. I, I would also say too, I would also say too, like um, a lot of these organizations, they like to, they're making money on the branding of Medicare for all and single payer. They don't want to solve the problem. They just want to, they just want to have this facade that they actually give a shit, but they really don't. Because I think that once they enact Medicare for all, then it, it cease to be important. And yeah, so that's why I think that's why a lot, of, that's why a lot of these organizations are not doing anything. Oh yeah, a lot of these a lot of these organizations will will lose their income. They'll lose their money if if Medicare for all happens. There goes their organization. So there goes the grift, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen that throughout history with so many different. Uh, propositions um but yeah this is this is definitely uh one of the latest iter iterations of the grift and um it's just insane when you take a step back from all of it and think that we can't get health care for everybody in this country the money's there the money's there to feed everybody the money's there to house everybody to clothe everybody to provide everybody once again, with healthcare. And it's just, it's a brick wall every time. I, I don't understand it. Um, I mean, I understand, like I said at the beginning of the show, the socio-political mechanics behind it, the political economy behind it, but there's no humanity behind it. And I think that's the big problem. Right. It's gonna take, um... 2021 is the year of the spectator now has to be the activist. You know, you're going to need more Americans like us, you know, who care about these issues to get out there. You know, we're going to, you know, you know, this is like a new endeavor for me um, to getting involved in doing something like this, uh, this magnitude. And it's going to take a lot more people like us to just say, hey, you know, we don't have the politician. We don't have the organization. We don't have anyone helping us. We help us. We protect us. You know, we have to just have that mindset that no one's going to do this. We have to do this. We just have to just really get ingrained in ourselves that we have to be the ones that really do this. And I think that once, um, again, you know, said this earlier, once that we realize that, you know, these people are just not going to help us, you know, and that we actually hold truth to power, you know, we're going to get it. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of, you know, apathy in America. We all know that. And I think, I think that has to change. I think this past year had to have been telling for a certain amount of the population. It, maybe they don't know it right now, but I think, I think it, things are going to start clicking with people when they see mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, it doesn't, you know, George Floyd, you know, this guy got, you know, I don't know what, have they sent, have they sentenced him yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah, a, a very softball sentence. Yeah, right. right. So you're, you're seeing that these protests, you know, you do all these protests, thousands of protests, literally thousands of protests, and it, and it doesn't really change things. Eventually, like, people are, are going to be like, wait, something's really wrong here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, there's way too many apathetic people, way too many propagandized people that are caught up in the, the, the news cycle 24-7. Um, but I think eventually things are going to have to give, right? Um, it's it's just weird. Yeah, I, don't know. I agree. It's gonna take a. I hate using the term mass awakening because it sounds like very cultish, but right. it is it is going to take something like that, um, sort of whatever you would call the opposite of complacency for for people to. Um, to get these demands fulfilled or I would say like we have like you were saying um Ricky like we have to fulfill them for ourselves and and Sharif you were saying that as well we have to do this ourselves we really can't rely on these people to um fulfill any of the just survival demands that we're making uh they don't care they're they're fine they're in their uh, Elysium bubbles uh, in DC or, you know, Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco, whenever she makes it out there. Um, and they're just completely detached from, from what 
the three of us and so many tens of millions of other Americans have to go to uh, go through. And that's the, you know, that's a huge part of the problem too, is, is this, um, you know, it's a class issue as well. There's, there's a detachment from this, this elite um, aristocratic sort of like patrician class of people like AOC and Nancy Pelosi from people like us who work jobs or, um, you know, like we don't have all the money in the world. We can't just uh, jet set whenever the whenever we want to. And it's that detachment, that class detachment, which I think needs to be, um, I think that needs to be talked about more as well. And- um, It's the Hunger Games. Yeah, I'm just not sure that, that there's any way to change um, the system that we have now because it's it's the upper tier that's been embedded in controlling it for so long and, and wielding yeah. it upon us for so long. But um, that said, I, I I still think that this this march that you've organized is important and necessary. So um, I and I know viewers, all the viewers, um, or most of them besides the haters, um, will will appreciate your efforts too. So uh, just to wrap up, can you, uh, can both of you tell our viewers where they can find you online and then um, just recap the details of the March again? Yeah, um, Ricky, you wanna talk, um, go over the website? Uh, if we're talking about where you can find the March, you can find the March at m4m4all.org. That's m the number four, m the number four all.org. You can drop your email address there if you want to get our general blasts. Uh, also on that website, you'll find RSVP sites for our DC March and our Los Angeles March. Seattle is brand new, so we're working on that right now. Uh, you can find us on social. Uh, the March for Medicare for All is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. So you can type that in and we usually pop up or M4, M4 all, if that I does not work. Can I just uh, pause for a second? Sure. I just need to take this quick call. Okay. Hello? Hi. I'm in... Can you just leave it downstairs, please? I'm in the middle of something. A uh, picture? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, just on the top. All right. Okay, I'll send you that. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. All good. We'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have um, fun editing this one. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, was there uh, was there anything else that you wanted to add? Ricky? Uh, that's where you can find all of our stuff. Uh, you can find me at Ricky Rants, all one word with an exclamation point for the eye. I'm on Twitter, ranting away, defending Misty from all the anti Assange people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> never ending, a never ending uh, job. <laughs> right. Literally. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter. At I am forward to number four. For Medicare for all. So that's I am for M4A on Twitter. Okay, great. Anyway. And then uh, as far as the, the March, it's going down in July. Yeah, the 24th is on Saturday. Um, right now we have LA and DC for the 24th. Um, we're hoping that whole Washington again, if uh, there's no scheduling restrictions, uh, we'd like to have that on also, also on the 24th. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, great, great. So hopefully it'll be a, uh, do you have any idea um, or any anticipation of what the turnout will be? Um, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be big actually. Uh, bigger than I expected it to be. Uh, I, uh, Ricky can tell you that I thought, I was, I'm just happy if we just get like, if people just show up. I think now it's gonna be even bigger than what I imagined it to be. Cause I was just wanting, I, I was expecting maybe about, maybe about 100 people. But mm -hmm. I think it's going to be bigger than that, actually. 
Yeah, uh, after I went down to DC for Force to Vote, I was actually there. Um, and, and we had, you know, a few dozen people show up last minute. And that was a last minute sort of thing. Force to Vote was a spur of the moment thing. And we were still, you know, in the middle of COVID-19 madness. Uh, that was a little bit disappointing to turn out because a lot of people who said they were going to go didn't go. But I think now that we ha we've had, you know, more time to reflect on this past year, and people have you know more time to plan and and it's summer too. Summer is it's a different it's a different beast. The middle of winter mm -hmm. is a much harder time to get people to do anything. I feel like so mm -hmm. I I think with the right planning we will get uh, you know thousands of people to turn out to each one. Maybe not massive on a massive scale, but hopefully we can get a, a few thousand at each. But also uh, we've had a lot of people reach out that you know they're like how can I get involved locally? I we've had like a con congressional candidate in. Alabama reach out, uh, Shahid Buttar has reached out. Like we've had some people, you know, there's there's some mumblings all around the country. Savage Jordan. Oh, Savage, 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 Savage Jordan now is gonna be a guest um, speaker on the DC March, which is amazing. So, so yeah. Nice. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's gaining traction. That's that's good. And uh, y'all still have several more months too to to build up that traction. So it's exciting. We'll um, uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to that. Uh, so, with that, I guess we can wrap. Um, the guests today on Facts on the Ground have been Sharif Snugs and Ricky Dunlop, uh, and they are two activists and organizers uh, who are behind the March for Medicare for All, which is, uh, as you heard, happening in uh, at the end of July. Uh, in DC, in Los Angeles, and Seattle, you said, or somewhere Seattle. else in Washington State, Seattle. Seattle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's uh, right now. That's that's where everything's going down. There may be more cities uh, added to that. Um, so, Shah uh, Sharif, uh, we just did an interview with uh, Shahid. So his his name is still stuck in my head. Sharif, uh, Ricky, thank you so much for, for joining me and for joining us on Facts on the Ground. And uh, it would be great to have you back on to um, discuss the progress of, of what you're working on. So uh, hopefully you'll be down to do that and uh, we can keep in touch and finally uh, be able to go to the doctor without having to worry about uh, <laughs> losing our bank accounts. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. Take care. Mm -hmm.